Bienvenue à tous. Welcome to Reporters here on France 24. I'm Mark Owen. In this edition, how the French regional elections expose the largest ever number of people choosing not to vote. Abstention rates reached over 66% in round one, 657 in the decisive second round. Clovis Casali has been following this phenomenon for us. Clovis, what have people been saying to you about why they didn't vote? Well, Mark, what's interesting, and you've lived for many years in France, you know this, politics is hugely important for the French. People talk about politics constantly in dinner parties with friends. It's really not a taboo a topic, and yet you've got these huge abstention rates. People just don't bother to go and vote anymore, and it's especially the case with the younger generations, the under 35s. 80% of under 35s did not go to vote in the regional elections. Uh, and when you talk to these people, they tell you that they are interested in politics. They are pro-democracy, of course, but they just don't like the way um, traditional parties operate. And that's very much their key message. They want a change of system. Change of system, Clovis Casali. Thank you very much indeed. Let's take a look then at Clovis's report. We bought the house in January 2021, and I felt fulfilled ever since. I'm living my best life here. I've always dreamed of living in a community and experimenting with farm life. For me, it's a political act to say no to what I was destined to become, an engineer in a large corporate company. It's a political act to refuse a big salary and instead live in harmony with nature. It's a political act to live outside the norm. They are no older than 35 and wanted a fresh start in life, away from capitalism. Victoria and her friends bought this house in Normandy with their savings and money borrowed from family. They refused to go through banks. They despise the financial system and feel let down by politicians. The basic principle is that, like plants, we should help each other. Just like in purchasing this house together, plants exchange nutrients and protect each other against enemies. <laughs> The state or capitalism? <laughs> Imagine a protest. These plants would be street medics providing care. And the others would be black bloc rioters. <laughs> House rules involve sharing all costs and having at least one meal a day together. We grow salads in the garden and we eat one every day. Let's have delicious food and talk politics. Nowadays, we're left voting for the least worst. Sometimes I have the impression they stole our dreams and our lives. It makes sense for me to take back power, not to dominate others, but to live the way I want. We take decisions together as a community. That's politics or whatever you call it. It's just at our own level. Most of them see no point in voting. They want to reinvent politics locally. The eight founding members of this community come from different backgrounds. Several graduated from prestigious engineering or business schools. Jonas is a graphic designer from Belgium. People often make fun of us Belgians because there was a long political crisis with no real government. But I think that if you delegate all powers to a president, people don't feel invested. Maybe people don't vote because they feel left out of the political discussion. Often we are asked, who is the leader, the leader of the garden, of the project? Well, we don't have a leader, and for us, that's how politics should be. So here's the co-working space. Jonas is working on a comic book about our endeavour, of our Four Winds project. Friends often struggle to understand their choice of embracing this alternative lifestyle. 
reminiscent of the hippie movement from the 1960s. What I dislike with the word hippie is that it tends to point to a disorganized or utopian approach. We might be dreamers, but we're very well organized. We think and talk a lot. We wash, we clean the house and eat healthy food. We're not a hippie cliché. <laughs> Yes, indeed, we are clean. I actually agree with the word neo-hippie with all the positives it entails. That movement brought a lot, even if it didn't completely work. We share those values and push things forward sticking with what worked. Taking politics to a different level is also Tatiana Ventose's ambition. Her platform of choice is YouTube and more generally social networks. Her videos get hundreds of thousands of views. Politics has always been her passion. In her 20s, she quickly rose in the ranks of Jean-Luc Mélenchon's far-left party before storming out. Sans regret, j'ai rompu avec la gauche parce que la gauche a cessé d'être du côté de son peuple, qu'elle a renié ses valeurs, son histoire, sa classe, son pays. Elle a renié les siens. C'est terrible à dire, mais euh, it's awful to say this, but France is being destroyed and dismantled in terms of industry, agriculture, and even culturally. Meanwhile, you have politicians sitting in old rooms, wondering if their ideology is the best and trying to convince the world that it is. She sees no difference between the left and the right. For her, the real extremists are those who support globalization. I understand abstention and low turnout. For several years now, I haven't voted or have cast a blank ballot. I want to be able to vote for ideas I value, for a project that offers us all a decent life. A revolutionary at heart, she considers politicians and most journalists a ruling class perpetuating an unfair system. She quit being an English teacher to create with Tommy an alternative online media. So you have free trade agreements, and they say it will help provide the majority of people with better food. But it's precisely the opposite that happens. It's just sweet music to the ears of hipsters in Paris. They have the money to eat organic, that's for sure. They vow to offer the public a different take on the news from the so-called traditional media. We don't pretend to be objective. There's nothing wrong presenting the public with a certain point of view if it's stated beforehand and open to criticism. And what is that point of view? Well, it really depends on the topic. Our point of view can change. Take nuclear energy. At first, we believe the common thinking, that it's bad for the planet. But then we began looking at numbers and facts, and we realized we were wrong. Tatiana always hoped people would rebel against rulers, and the moment seemed to come with the Yellow Vests movement. It was back in 2018, when hundreds of thousands across France started to protest over rising fuel prices and new tax policies. Lawyer François Boulot was one of their spokesmen. Three years later, on Labour Day, he and his friends are back on the streets. On va le dire avec prudence, mais Joe Biden aux États-Unis. Mmh. Parce qu'aux États-Unis, oui. les classes dominantes, ça y est, elles ont eu peur là. Là, celui qui va nous représenter, qui va <rire> se présenter. Il n'y a pas un parti politique médias... aujourd'hui alternatif mmh. qui peut émerger avec des médias pareils. Mmh. Les médias vous invisibiliseront, là, ils vous disqualifieront, là, ils vous discréditeront, ils vous diaboliseront. Mmh. Là, moi, je ne suis pas invité. Oui. Quel oui. média j'ai fait veulent. Nous, on vous invite. Hein, <rire> The yellow vests rarely gather anymore. Euh, où es-tu But their message hasn't changed. 
Ah bah attends, regarde, bouge pas. Ça va, mon ami Tu connais François Jérôme Rodriguez est le leading figure of the movement. He lost an eye during clashes with police at one of the protests. Political parties tried to recruit him, but he refused. What's the point in voting if it means casting your ballot on a Sunday in spring and then having to shut your mouth for the next five years? Voting is useless. Look at how fast the world goes. Why should politicians ask people their opinion only once every five years? They should ask us how we feel by referendum or through direct democracy. There are so many ways. Many French have lost hope. François Boulot is not surprised by record low turnout in elections. He calls for an overhaul of the system and a reset of financial markets. I can't imagine sitting comfortably at home enjoying my status and possessions. When you've been lucky enough to go to university, get knowledge and be in a privileged position, then you should give something back to society. Fifty kilometers away from Paris lies the Seine-et-Marne area, which saw many yellow vests take to the streets. Pierre-Emmanuel Beigny is a former mayor. Many mayors saw the yellow vest crisis coming. When you are a locally elected official, you clearly get a sense of the mood of society. You are not a politician disconnected from reality. I, myself, was sympathetic to their cause. He was surprised by the amount of work when elected at the age of 29. Few people know that mayors deal with all social problems. He's the one you call when you have family problems, when there are problems with construction in the town, or when there are any kinds of issues. The mayor is always on the front line. He ruled out running for a second term, choosing instead to spend more time with his family. He can now also focus on his small video surveillance company. His time as mayor remains a bitter memory. It was Bastille National Day Ball in 2015. There was a drunk man who wasn't from my town and who started insulting my local police. I walked towards him to engage calmly, and he then tried to strangle me. He went on to punch me just because I was the mayor and a symbol of authority. All he wanted was to hurt me. A 2020 inquiry showed that acts of verbal and physical abuse against mayors had tripled in a year. Small towns are increasingly struggling to find candidates. Why would I never want to go into politics? Because it's a can of worms. I would get constantly harassed. I don't want my children to get abused because I'm in politics and from a different party than the others. Paris has been asking local authorities to take on more responsibilities while reducing public funding. Pierre-Emmanuel felt let down by the state and wrote a book about his experience to raise awareness. I had citizens telling me that voting meant choosing the lesser of two evils. Maybe. But it's a shame to abstain given that our ancestors fought to have that right to vote. Women didn't have that right until as late as 1945. So we must respect that. Even if you don't agree with politicians, vote anyway, even if it's a blank ballot. Express yourself, express your disagreement. Millions of French are torn between voting or not. And it's not always because they're disinterested in politics. Some want to reinvent democracy with a more grassroots approach. Dreams of change to build a fairer society. Our reporter, Clovis Casali, is still here with us. Thank you so much for that insight into the voting and political minds of French people. It is fascinating. Um, is the issue then that people no longer trust politicians? That's a key problem here. People don't trust the uh, traditional parties. There's this distrust, this mistrust. Uh, the people we spoke to feel that politicians are basically part of a ruling elite, a class that's trying to perpetuate uh, the system. And a lot of the people we spoke to are basically not entirely against capitalism, but they want the system to change. They want it to be uh, fairer. 
they feel that uh, currently there are more and more inequalities, that they have less chances of succeeding in life than, say, their parents, and that's a major problem uh, for them. Uh, those neo-hippies who we met at the beginning, that's the way they describe them themselves. Well, you have uh, this um, woman, Victoria, who's a uh, trained engineer. She worked uh, for the City Hall here in Paris, and she's very disillusioned, as you saw in the report. Let's take a listen to an interview we did not include in the report, but I find particularly revealing. At my job, I exchanged and worked with service providers who had contracts with local authorities. I was working with town halls, but I really had to leave. I came across too many cases of conflict of interest. Even though I was an engineer, enrolled for five years at a prestigious university, I had no power. To have power, I would have to have waited for 10 to 15 years. And if I'd waited that long, I would probably have betrayed my values and beliefs. The words there of uh, Victoria. As gathered by Clovis Casale, Clovis, what kind of problems did you uh, encounter in putting together this report? Well, we knew beforehand that it would be difficult to speak uh, to many of these uh, people who reject the system, who reject the media, because they feel that uh, traditional, so-called traditional media, such as ourselves in a way, uh, are part of this system, trying to perpetuate the system, that we're colliding, there's the collusion of interest, and basically, we knew we had to convince them that we weren't here to uh, do a caricature, to misportray them, but simply to present their views. And that's truly what we tried uh, to do. So we went to meet these people, and once they understood that our intentions were good, that we tried to be as objective as uh, possible, then they agreed to do the interviews, and uh, the um, filming went well. Then you've got the Yellow Fest, who uh, a lot of them despise the media once again, we uh, were welcomed into those circles, and it went well, but it has to be said because of François Boulot, that lawyer who's their spokesman. Clearly, political parties, the traditional uh, political parties, need to hear these people, because when you have two-thirds of the French people not voting, it means there's a true problem, and uh, politicians know that, and they need to act decisively before the coming presidential ballot. And Clovis, I'm not surprised they elected to speak to you. Our best reporter who always gives a faithful representation of the, any story that he does. Clovis, thank you very much indeed. You can, of course, see Clovis's report again uh, via our website, france24.com. This is Reporters on France 24. Stay with us. Most of all, stay safe.